top 10 beginners tits tits <laughs> top 10 <laughs> beginners tips for spring of 2024 <laughs> join with me is cat also known as squid princess you started a brand new account at the beginning of the year so you've been playing the game four and a half months yep i started a brand new account 12 days ago but i've been playing the game over 2000 days i was playing the game before the game came out so this is a brand new account for me called baby boomer so we're gonna do <laughs> the top 10 tips that new players need to do right away now tip number one you ready you know what this one is tell me what I it do. is connect to the web store yeah you can do this within 10 minutes of starting the game you'll see right here it says redeem gift if you want to create a scopely id now they give you some options with that how to connect it but i just used my gmail account. yeah yeah I, that's I, the easiest way because if you just connect to your gmail account they'll send you an email when you need to log in you don't need to do a password you don't need to worry about any of that yeah so definitely without a doubt create a scopely id with your uh, email something like that now, this is a big 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 deal and you can do this right away there's a bunch of free bonus stuff if you will um what's the first thing that happens when you get it? you get access to the milestones that are on the web store right mm -hmm. so tell us what that is so usually they have events running that tie in with things that you can do in game for example with peter b parker here um it's all based on earning blitz credits so if you earn blitz credits then you get points on the web milestone if you spend power cores you get points on the web milestone and then you get campaign energy you get orbs you get a bunch of other materials things that feed into other events even if you don't remember to collect them that day they'll kind of save there for you for i don't know how one long day. But yeah, yeah one day the next day yeah mm -hmm. and then you can go back and grab them when you remember yep so you want to do this every day there's mm -hmm. so much stuff here every day in addition to all the milestones and the web events you click the store tab now i've already collected there'll be like a series of tabs up here one of the tabs will say free claim mm -hmm. And this resets every day here in Las Vegas. It's at two o'clock Pacific time, but that yeah. is, that's the, the server reset that mm -hmm. happens every day. And there's going to be new free claims. How many, there's usually about four, but sometimes there's as many as six. That's yeah, you, you I've get, seen anywhere from three to six. Three to six. And this is where you're gonna get your Mr. Negative shards. So mm -hmm. do this every day. Now this is gonna be the single biggest jumpstart Thing that you can do for your account is going to be redeem your new player gift tell us about that you get uh, there's a lot of codes that we can use so here's a list right above um, you want to do these I think you said that they only work if you do every 120 seconds or something like that I don't know how you figure that out he's a genius um, but you can put all of these in, you get character shards, you get power cores, which are super helpful. And then you're able to get ultra cores with some of these, right? Yeah, you want to do these. Like, and a lot of these are brand new kids. Venom Free, Welcome, Gambit. Oh my God, Gambit is so good for early game. Probably the best Love character. Him. You're probably your best character too. And you've been playing mm -hmm. the game for a little bit long. And then, but you have to wait. If you, you have to like plug one in and then wait about two minutes and then plug it in because it won't let you do all of them in a row. And Night is the only one that is currently not working. This is for level 60. I will put a link to this in the description because these codes update all the time. For example, there is another code that is not on this list and that is Ghost Spider. Redeem promo code Ghost Spider. I found this on Instagram. If you want to follow them on Instagram, then you will see these codes as they come out and then you get the following. So got to go to the Scopely store because one, you can go in and do the daily challenges and get the free gifts every day and the milestones. Two, you can do the redeem gifts, which are gonna give you so much free stuff right when you start your account. And then three, they also give you some ultra cores for registering, mm -hmm. and then you can spend those 10 ultra cores on this offer right here, which is, they give you 50, right? Yeah, because I still have 40 that are sitting there because I bought this offer and then haven't done anything else with it. But it's basically like a gift card to use on Marvel Strike Force purchases. So you basically get five bucks to work with. This counts as a dollar. Right. So absolutely do that. And that'll give you a silver surfer, who's okay. But more importantly, you get gold, 
you get power cores and training materials. And mm -hmm. uh, that one web store milestone that I collected now shows up. I got my premium orb and I got that basically for just logging into the web store and I got some free character shards. Next, so that's tip number one. Now that we've got all of these power cores, what do you spend the power cores on? Spend the 50s. Yeah, so <laughs> spend the 50s is this right here. Purchase campaign energy. The first batches that you do of them will cost 50 and then it goes to 100. Now I'm gonna buy this one right 100 just so you can see <gasps> how that works. Oh you gosh. can do 100 sometimes. Do I do it sometimes, especially if I'm like a couple character shards away from ranking somebody up and I've already spent my fifth, I've already like run through all of my campaign energy. I'm like, I'll just do, it's fine. But at least do the 50s because one, it helps with daily objectives. When you get a little further along, there are some optional daily objectives that want right. you to spend a certain amount of energy. Um, but it also is really helpful to get character shards, which is what you need early on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So like every day it resets and always spend the 50s purchasing campaign energies. And sometimes there will be special event currency energy. Mm -hmm. and, and it's generally good to spend the 50s on them as well. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, then when it gets to 100s, I usually back up and they ramp up. It goes 50s, 100, 200, 400. Keeps oh, really? going. Yeah, it keeps going up to like 3,200 at least. Oh my gosh. But, but yeah, just, I only do the 50s. The 50s yeah. is gonna be the best value now. And I think you get four rounds of 50s, Yeah. right? You can spend 50 four times, and what does that end up being, like 480 energy? Well, then you get your free energy of the day. You need to spend about yeah. 600 a day to satisfy what your alliance wants once you join alliance, which we will get back to in a minute, because that is super important as well. Yeah. So this is something that is new into the game is that they have introduced a much, much easier way of getting gear. Mm -hmm. And it is no longer necessary to spend campaign energy to buy gear. Which is new for me, because when I first started, it, I had to farm gear like crazy, and that was what I spent a majority of my campaign energy on. Right. So this is what I'm trying to say, is do not buy and farm gear with your campaign energy. Literally, you could go in here and you can't spend all of this, right? No. You just do this as needed. If you need green gear, you come in here, there's two different orbs. One is catalyst and one is green gear. And you just open up, you know, you just open up 10 of them until you have enough pieces to upgrade your character. Then if you're working on a skill character and you run out of blue, then you come up here to blue and then you do that. You literally do not need to farm gear at all. No. Like zero gear. I've been playing the game and you just don't have to do any gear. Nope. nope. I don't at all. I've, I've only just started running out of gear again. But look, he has like, if you look up there, he had about 1 million of these credits. Like you're not going to run out you of still these. Have them. You still have like Oh, I day. have like 1.4 million. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So you don't need to open these all right now. But as needed, whenever you need purple tech gear, whenever you need blue catalyst gear, blue mm -hmm. mutant gear, whatever you need, only do this. And this is what we're, what the point is. What do I spend this campaign energy on? Not gear. And there's a couple- <laughs> Character shards. Yeah, not gear. And, there, and, and the reason why character shards are, are super important right now is one of the main bottlenecks that I'm experiencing is ability materials. And mm -hmm. the nodes that have the green ability materials just happen to be character shards. So yeah, there's some gear on these, but my suggestion is to only farm character shards with campaign energy. So I'm gonna do that. And I, I, I'm not really being super specific, but what characters have you been focusing on buying almost every day? Um, when it comes to spending my campaign energy, I tend to go for Hela. I, she's usually one of the yeah. first ones because she, you can unlock uh, her node. I think it's at Villains 3-9. Mm -hmm. It's something that you can unlock pretty quickly. Um, she is a great character. And especially as you progress and get Undying, she she and the two Undying are just, right. they decimate teams. Right. It's really amazing. Yeah, really. Yeah, so I'm basically doing Hela and then sometimes I will do uh, Gamora. Mm -hmm. Well, I should have did Gamora. Oh, I should, right now I should have farmed Gamora. <laughs> I didn't realize that I had none. Gamora, another one would be uh, Nebula. So anyways, yeah. the main thing is 
spend all of your campaign energy. And when you first start the game, you can play the game. I believe I played the game for like six hours on day one. Yeah. You want to go through all of these. You want to move all the way through them. And then uh, when you go through these, not, the, not this, we'll come back to that because that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Heroes assemble. You want to move through and finish these all 100%. You want to advance. So when you start off on chapter one, you want to advance to chapter two, and then it'll level cap you. But uh, typically go through all of them, spend all of your campaign energy and spend all of your campaign energy on the nodes that have character shards. If you need gear, go into the supply store and re redeem that there. Yeah. That is a very big deal because you don't need to farm gear at all with the changes that they made to this right here. These orbs are amazing. Now, let's talk about the arena. You ready? Yeah. To talk about the arena? Let's talk arena. Oh boy. So before I get into what to upgrade and how the arena works is, I wanna say that when you hit level 30, the arena unlocks, mm -hmm. and then you are placed into arena shard based on your time zone and when you started the game. Mm -hmm. And it is clumps of 10,000 people and you get put in there and all of those people have started the game in a relatively uh, the same amount of time of you. Now, I experienced something unusual is that because people aren't joining my shard that frequently, my shard was 41 days old. <laughs> So I really felt like I was behind. And when I joined my arena shard, I was like 8,700, 8,700. 8, and then when the 9,000th and the 99th, 95th, 100th person, and then a new shard starts when it gets to 10,000. Yeah. And so um, joining the shard late, it's not something you really can control. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing you can do about larger players because someone can go and buy the time heist offers and spend, I think it's $330. And these we're free to play. Both you are free to play on our new accounts. Yeah. And a person that's willing to spend uh, that $330, their collection power is going to shoot up to about $6 million. Which is even more than my total collection power as somebody who's been playing for four and a half months. Yeah. So it gives... People, I, I would say it's, it probably almost gives someone a six month head start. So yeah. we're not buying this, but if you do buy this, this is going to give you, you know, take you all the way up very quickly. I believe mm -hmm. uh, the, if you buy every single one of those offers, it is $330 and 6 million collection power. And it's almost like a six month head start. That being said, don't stress out about your arena shard because. If you either spend or you don't, right? Yep. You, and if you don't spend, you just can't worry about uh, where you're placing in the shard. So I started at 8,700. Um, you know, people had a 40 day head start on me and I've already climbed to level 479. So here is the question is, what characters do you use in the arena? So how did you go about finding out what your best arena team was and how has that been for you? I found that out by losing a lot. <laughs> I found that out by paying attention to who was beating me and teams that I was having a hard time battling against. And typically that would be extreme X-Men. Um, I'm being kind of a booger about it because I, I'm i not using Sunspot in Arena. I'm using Phoenix instead because when I'm trying to climb, if she dies, she comes back and she's even more powerful. So I like her for Arena in that sense and I know Juicy's gonna come for me because he always does when I talk about that. <laughs> right? There's two things is that in general in this game uh, new characters and new teams are better than old teams so if you have a way of knowing like I just know what teams are good and not good that's why I make videos about it but if you're not sure I'm gonna link to this Google Doc sheet that shows what characters are farmable and also when they've been released so in general, new teams and new characters are better than old characters. Minions right. are terrible. There is some exceptions, and the exceptions to that is reworks. And I and it's just, just not a good way of knowing if a character has been reworked. And for example, 
on this team right here, which happens to be very good right now, two of these characters are characters that have been in the game from before. They're older characters, and they were reworked, and they're amazing. And that would be Gambit and Cyclops. The other three are new. So it's kind of hard to know when a character's been reworked, but reworks are very important. When you see videos about reworks, it generally means that they got stat increases, and sometimes they turn out to be amazing. Vulture rework was amazing. The Gamora rework a million years ago was amazing. Sometimes the reworks are lackluster, but in general, they are um, pretty good, good. Yeah, it's a good rule of thumb to use if you're trying to decide is a character good. So be mindful of the teams that you lose to an arena because that will show you what's good. Yeah. Especially if you have a bigger team and you lose to a smaller team. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's how you discovered how good Nightcrawler was. Oh, yeah. Because Nightcrawler will just destroy you. And, <laughs> and this is good for today. Like, this is a good team for a beginner player today. You've got a similar team. In general, if you watch the top 10 teams list videos that I make, and you're able to complete a team that I talk about in these videos, because I make these videos quite often, uh, then you're gonna be able to have a team that works. Also, talking to your alliance, we're gonna talk about alliances here in a minute, talking to your alliance mates on what teams to upgrade for raids mm -hmm. is typically also going to be a good team for your arena, or can be good for your arena, but you can kill two birds with one stone. So for me right now, it's Extreme X-Men, amazing raid team, amazing arena team, and I love it. And it does very well in the arena. And you can see I've got 110,000 power and the teams around me are much bigger and I'm holding my ground because it's a good team. And I found that out by losing to this team, <laughs> right? That's, yep. that's what happened. I lost to this team. I was like, why did I lose to this team? My team's bigger because it's a better team. So arena is very good. I want to talk about alliances for a second because alliances are a big deal. So, for example, I, I was able to join an alliance that has war already working. The starter alliances don't have war and you want to get an alliance. Now, how did you find your alliance? Actually, we can't talk about how we found our alliance because <laughs> Kat was streaming and she found somebody in her chat and she joined their alliance and that's been good and it was an alliance that was established. Yeah. And then I joined your alliance, right? Yeah. <laughs> so here's nepotism. The yes. So I'm going to put a, a link to two different Discord servers in the description. One is to the player voice movement. Mm -hmm. That's where I got that spreadsheet from. So this was a spreadsheet from that movement right there. That's also on there. There'll be a link to that as well. The other thing will be to the Discord that is actually ran by the developers. It's the My Marvel Strike Force official Discord. On both of those servers, you will find recruitment areas where you can find an alliance. And I think you want to find an alliance uh, that is currently playing in war and has war unlocked. And the reason for that is every two weeks, there is a payout at the end of season, which is today for me. Yeah. And you can see on this account, I am out of gold, but because I joined an alliance that is already playing in war in an alliance war, I'm going to be collecting what? 15 million gold for a lot of gold and a I lot. need the gold. So, he needs have, it on both accounts. Yeah, I need it on both accounts. You got to find an alliance. Um, in general, the, the alliance that they put you in, you don't want to stay with. You want to mm -hmm. go and work with an alliance that uses Discord and communicates on Discord. Uh, the best experience you're going to have in this game is if you use Discord. I know some people don't use Discord, but your experience is going to be a lot better. If you do use Discord, mm -hmm. I highly recommend it. And then if the alliance that you join is doing and actively participating in raids, uh, then you can contribute even by just going into the battle and backing out. Because when you do your daily objectives, uh, it says like do eight strike initiative raid, complete in raids. Even going into the battle, now this is kind of a cheat thing right here. Like I just go, like I can't beat this node at all. And I will just go in, like this team's wiped out. I will just go into the battle and back out so that I can, um, get points yeah. right you, and you do wanna, something you got to do something right and then you're able to collect the raid rewards and then i'm also able to collect the alliance milestone rewards which is a significant amount of gold so i'm not trying to win this node i'm just <laughs> <laughs> he's just losing on yeah. purpose and that gives me one more raid attempt uh and so that i'm going to finish my daily activities and then 
I know we're jumping around here, but you got to finish all your daily activities like mm -hmm. every day. I mean, get rid of all the red dots. Now there is a red dot you can't get rid of and that is temporary right now, but typically you want to get rid of all of your red dots, like one up to seven of eight. You want to get rid of the, there's a red dot right here behind me. You can't get rid of that one. You can't get rid of this roster one, but no. you don't want red dots ever, right? So tell me about that. Do everything that you possibly can, especially when it comes to daily objectives. Uh, doing the daily objectives means that you're making progress on the strike pass, which mm -hmm. is where you get a lot of materials. Even if you're not directly using them right now, like your account is probably not going to need a lot of orange gear, but you will eventually. So it's a good idea to just go through it, do it all, and then you get character shards on a great character. Currently, it's Void Knight, who is fantastic, and I think who you need, yeah, I need him. in your account. Yeah. So this is what it should look like towards the end of the day. Yep. Everything's done. You want to finish everything like that. This is also going to be one of the main ways that you get experience. You're going to get a lot of experience by spending your campaign energy. So yep. that's why I'm saying spend all of your campaign energy. Now we're going to go and talk about events, which is going to be the next tip. And there's going to be an events tab and there's going to be two different things in this tab. There's going to be legendaries. And there's also going to be, uh, what do we call these? These are like showcase events, month long yeah. events. And there's something- For new teams and new characters who are coming out soon or yeah. reworks. This is a big deal. There's there, and, and when you watch this video, it may be a different one here. Right. But whenever you see test drive, do it. go and do it. Because <laughs> uh, the game gives you uh, the character. So it doesn't matter if your count is too small or not. It just doesn't matter. It's not level lock. Because you can see right here, it's only mission provided characters. So that yes. means they give you the whole roster of characters to work with. It's so you can be introduced to these new characters that are coming out or reworks that are happening. But then you get resources for basically just playing the game. Yeah, veteran players miss this sometimes even. Like they just forget to do it. Like it's mission provided units. You can go in and run it on auto. Yeah, I do it on auto. <laughs> and then you get <laughs> so much bonus stuff mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter what level your account is. And this is for me where I got a lot of, um, I got, I think I got Weaver in here. I think yeah. I got 2099. I think I got Ghost Spider. Mm -hmm. Really good characters. And that is a rotating event. This one will end in 15 days and I'm guessing they'll start a new one but got to do the test drive. Now, there are legendary characters in here and this is a good news, bad news. Um, there are one or two, maybe three good legendaries, but most of these legendaries in this area are not good. Tell me what are the good legendaries? And I mean, I think you can get them even, uh, the, the one that you're gonna mention first, I already know what it is. <laughs> I got on the first day, you got them on day five, right? Yep. Doc Ock. Okay. We love him. Um, he works really well in a lot of situations, especially gives you a head start on Sinister Six, who's one of one of the best teams in the game. Um, you also get mega orbs from doing any of these missions. So even if you're not worried about getting the character shards for these legendaries, at the very least, do all of these events that you can because you get gold, you get character shards, you get um, mega orbs, you get a lot of resources that you're gonna need eventually. And even mega orbs give you character shards for really good characters right. and a lot of them. Yeah, so the, the best legendary that I've unlocked so far in here is going to be Doc Ock. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's limited use for Magneto, Nick Fury, and maybe even Phoenix. But in general, it's all about Doc Ock. And then the rest of them, I do finish them and the reason why I finish them is I want the mega orbs and that's it. I, I'm not really uh, probably going to use Jubilee or, you know, it just depends. Uh, not for a while. Not for a least. while. Yeah, I don't need them right now because they're not a part of my arena team. And right. so just saying that, that the legendaries um, aren't as legendary as they once were with the exception of Doc Ock. Now I want to talk about uh, the scarcity of ability materials and that is also ties in with the suggestion of just using your campaign energy for character nodes, nodes, because that's where you're going to get the green ability materials. When you go to the supply store, and this resets every eight hours, mm -hmm. there is an opportunity, and always buy these ability materials right here, because um, at some point you only have enough ability materials to do like one team. So like you'll have like a hundred characters unlocked but you really only want to put these ability materials initially at first on your arena team. And then when you have enough built up then you can start working on two teams. So I've been playing the game for 12, 
12 days and I really only have three teams built up because there's just not enough ability materials. No. So talk up a little bit about ability materials. So you'll get them. These are to level up the moves and the passives of the characters and they give a really good, they give a really good boost for things like arena. If you're going to do raids with your, uh, with your alliance, they're super helpful for that. So you can get them here in the store. I think the tier two here, they're usually what about 50,000 gold? Yep, 50,000 gold. Yeah. So, I mean, for somebody like Boomer here with only 68,000 gold, that seems like a lot. But if you're in an alliance where you get a good payout for war, it's not that bad. Right. And it's a really good use of the gold. Yeah, because there's there's not going to be enough resources to upgrade every character. Like mm -hmm. I said, I have uh, over 100 characters after only playing the game. I think I have 130 characters, something like that. And I'm really only using 10 of them, let's say. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be my arena team. And I changed arena teams. Originally, I was starting off with spiders, and then I switched to extreme X-Men. And, and that is where I'm going to put gold and upgrading them, because I'm going to run out of gold also, and ability materials, because that seems to be the main two bottlenecks right now, is gold and ability materials. So got to be selective on that. And whatever you're using in your arena team, do that. Whatever your alliance is suggesting for raid teams, do that and kind of work from there. As more game modes become important, such as Crucible and War, then you can go to more teams. You're just going to need more teams and more teams. But in general, focus on arena, focus on raids, and you're good to go. Now, mm -hmm. let's talk about the individual stores. And we're going to talk about every store this is probably the most important store to start off with because this is where you get all of your gear. You're not going to need to farm nodes. Now, you're going to build up um, blitz credits by blitzing. What do you spend your blitz credits on? So we're going to spend on different things because we're at different levels in the game. Um, I'm spending my blitz credits on, I'm still working on rescue because I want to have a really solid Pegasus team. Namor, because I know he's... He will be good for Cabal if I ever get to that point. Mockingbird, because I'm working on uh, New Avengers right now. They're really helpful for me. That's one of my main focus teams at the moment, like who I'm trying to level up and gear up and train up as much as possible because they're super helpful for me in war. Right. So I don't do that at all. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see here, this is 975 for five character shards, 975 for five character shards, and then it's 500 for five character shards. I literally go here and open Blitz Orbs for 350 and I'm getting random and I'm just getting more shards and gold, but I'm not laser focusing on the characters on, I, I want. I'm just getting quantity over quality. Okay. Which is good in the beginning. Yeah. This is I, what you want to do. I, I just open Blitz Orbs and I, I'm going to give you what I'm doing. I'm doing the same thing on Raid Orbs. I'm just going for... Quantity over quality. I'm just trying to get as many characters unlocked as possible mm -hmm. so I can blitz more if I feel like it. Uh, what are you buying in the Bits Supply Store? I'm working on Icarus as well as Big Time Spider-Man. Any of the major characters that I see and I recognize and I see very often, they're super helpful for that. Yeah, and if you're not sure, you can do like me and just open up the raid orbs and you're good to go. Now... Arena Orb. I do the same thing in Arena Orb. I just open <laughs> Arena Orb. Uh, what do you do in the Arena Store? I've been doing Ronin. Um, a little bit of Spider-Man Noir. Okay. Um, I've been doing Gambit a little bit, but I just unlocked the node where I can farm him. So I'd rather spend my Arena credits um, on Strange Heartless because right. I just uh, I just unlocked Morgan Le Fay. Right. So now I'm kind of pushing towards uh, Darkhold. Okay. as a team yeah and after talking to you i was just opening the arena orbs i'm probably going to pivot to gambit because he's on my arena team and he's amazing so i think i'm going to start doing that then war store does not have an orb no does, for opening character shards nope. so I've been buying Forge because that's my arena team. What else do you buy inside the War Store? I was working on Carnage, but I just got him to seven red stars, so I, we're solid there. Um, I've also been doing Ironheart Mark II, because like mm -hmm. I said before, I'm, I have a good Pegasus team, and I use them in raids and in a lot of other instances. Yeah, I think the only other character I bought out of here other than Forge was Cersei, and mm -hmm. that's fine. Now, over here we have something called... Uh, what is this? This is the Elite Store. Now, I have. you can see right here, I have 2,300 uh, silver promotion credits. I'm going to say that for the purpose of this video, 
do not think or care about any of these other currencies right here for now ignore gold promotion credits ignore dark promotion credits ignore right you agree with this right for now i mm -hmm. think most people just don't need to bother with that and the only one to focus on is silver promotion credits and what i do is because i have two thousand of them i buy every single one star always and then when i see a two star or higher i check to see the character to see if i have him unlocked i do not have him unlocked so i ignore it but i buy all the one star ones because there's over 270 characters in the game and it seems like it takes a long time for them to come back and it only costs one silver promotion credit to buy them uh so i just buy every character because eventually i'll unlock all of them and then if a character like you'll see here that i bought for gambit you can see that i have um so basically yellow stars um and you can go from start off whatever the character unlocks let's say they unlock the character unlocks at two stars or three stars they go up to seven and you can only put red stars on them to, well, they only get used you can put them on early but yeah. like so like right here they're you can, only useful if you have all of the yellow stars as well so you need to have all of the yellow stars right. and that's what you you're working on that when you get character shards you're bumping up the yellow star rank um but then you can add red stars onto it that give a really good stat boost right like you can see here so yellow stars are going to be based off character shards you collect character shards and then your character goes up yellow stars right mm -hmm. then you're going to get red stars from opening up these orbs or using these silver promotion credits but you can't have more red stars than yellow stars well you can they just don't get but used. it doesn't do anything yeah. like i got a seven red star uh shuri really quickly on right didn't matter at all still doesn't matter i still don't have her at seven yellow stars so it's it's just i see them there right. one day i'll get there yeah your effective star red stars so if you if you have a a two yellow star character and then you get a seven red on it but well, you only have a two red two yellow character but then when you get the three yellow then you'll have three red so mm -hmm. I do not buy these unless I have the yellow. So this is an example of a character that I have one red star on, but I have zero yellow. So it's not useful. The red stars are only good and useful when you have the yellows underneath them. I think I explained that well enough. Okay, so that is that. Now we, I want to talk about red star orbs. So you're going to get red star orbs right here. And there are two different times that these show up sometimes it'll say featured character and it'll say like the, the last featured care was po character was pov and then sometimes it'll say 10x and my suggestion is to only open these when it says 10x so when you see this screen right here with 10x that is the time to do it the exception would be to that is if you buy the character that is featured and you want the red stars on that character what are your thoughts on this yeah, I mean, most likely the game has gotten really good about giving free to play players and new players really good characters early on. But in examples of characters like Pav or Peter B. Parker, who are the most recent characters to come out and are really great, they're not just going to give them out to everybody. So you might get a seven red star promotion on it, but there's a very small likelihood that you're going to even unlock the character. So it's almost pointless to even open those orbs at the time. Okay, and then this is gonna be the very, very last tip, is that once you're in an alliance, you start generating some currency with your daily donation known as alliance credit, which mm -hmm. is used for Stark Tech. And my suggestion is to start upgrading your characters immediately with the Stark Tech and do whatever your arena team is now mm -hmm. my arena team happens to be extreme x-men so i am putting all of my stark tech into this right now because i want more damage on my extreme x-men right yep. anything you anything we missed on this video i don't think so i think we've covered a lot okay so this is uh the top 10 there were more than 10 tips uh, there's i think there was 14 i don't know <laughs> She's going to do some number system when she edits the videos. It's going to be amazing. Oh, this way. This way? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, be sure to like and subscribe if you've got something from this video. I typically put out news videos. Most of my videos are for in-game players, but there's always something in those videos. Plus, we do Alliance War videos three times a week. 
We also do crucible videos three times a week. Anything you want to say before we go? Nope. Bye for now. Bye.